All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can get VLOOKUP to return multiple columns in Excel. I have some data here, two little tables. I'm going to show you on the same worksheet first, and then I'll show you doing from another worksheet so you can have some examples. But let's get started with something basic. So I'm going to do a basic VLOOKUP here. So usually if we do a VLOOKUP, we'll do VLOOKUP and search for our matching value stock number here and then I'll go here and select the range where I'm searching for this F4 to lock this comma so if you're trying to do column number two that would be two and then comma and this would be an exact match which is false or zero I'm gonna do zero close parentheses hit enter so if I drag this down this would be all of the sizes for this matching stock numbers so if I also want to get the price and cost, I would have to now copy this formula, hit escape, go here and paste it, change this to four, and then go here and paste it and change this to five to get the cost, right? Now at any point, if we have to update one of these ranges, this is gonna get let me just add a column here. This is gonna get difficult. So another way to handle this, I'm gonna remove this and go back to this, is to use an array. So what I'm talking about is instead of returning just column two, I'm gonna create an array with this curly brackets and then do a comma separated list of columns. So let's say I want column number two, then comma number four, then comma number five. So two would be size, four would be price and five would be cost. So right now, if I hit enter, see that returns those three columns. And if I drag this down, it's basically just gonna return three columns from this table. Assuming you have the latest version of Excel, this should work this way. However, if you have a little earlier version of Excel, you will probably not get this. What's likely gonna happen, you will either get the first one only, just the size, or you will get some sort of value error. So the reason for that is because in earlier versions of Excel, arrays don't dynamically expand like this. So what you would have to do after you hit enter, you would have to do this. Select the number of columns here to the right, you would just have the first formula, let me delete this for a second. You would have to select this and the number of columns to the right like this and then click in the formula bar right here on top and then do control shift enter to apply this formula and then you would get the results like this then you could just drag it down and make it work now preferably you don't want to do this whole control shift enter situation you want it to just automatically expand so you want to try and see if it works otherwise you will have to do this I don't want to do this control shift enter get back to my basic formula because I have dynamic arrays and it expands like this. So now let's do this using this other tab worksheet that has some again matching table and I'm just going to delete all the stuff here to the right. Go back to this and start over. So if you're working with different tabs, it's pretty similar. So you just go equals VLOOKUP, you click on your matching value, comma, and then you go to your other tab to select the table. Now, if you have a clean data set, you can also select the whole column like this, which is what I'm gonna do this time. I'm gonna press F4 to lock this. Now you wanna make sure you continue working in this formula bar here on top and don't click back to your original data. So you wanna go here, comma, and then I'm gonna continue. Curly bracket and do the sequence of columns I want. So if I want two, four, and five, that would be size, price, and cost. So I'm gonna do two, comma, four, comma, five, close curly bracket like this, comma, and then zero for exact match close parentheses, hit enter, and there I have it, three columns from the other sheet. So if I decided also to get a few other columns, so maybe I also want category and items sold, so I'm gonna add those two as well. So I'll go back here and do comma six, comma seven, 
and then I drag it down and that returns all of the data. And this one has no match, so we don't get matches for that. That's nice. Now, once in a while, instead of having, let's say, four or five columns, you may have 20 columns that you need to return. So then you could obviously comma separate all of those. Or another option you could do is use a function called sequence. Sequence is a newer function. This might not be available if you're in older version of Excel. So the first argument in this function is number of rows. So let me show you how it generally works. So if I do two rows, comma, and then do four columns, and then see it has like the start and the step. So these are optional, you don't have to do it, but for now, let me just not do start and step, close parentheses and hit enter. So see what happened? It basically created a range with two rows and four columns. So that's four columns and two rows. And basically what it does, it starts from number one and it starts populating these numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I do three rows and four columns, it will basically again do three rows and keep doing this until it fills up the numbers. Now, if I do one row, it's just gonna go one, two, three, four. So basically one row and four columns. And if I do five, that will be basically one, two, three, four, five. Then you could do this comma and pass it a start number. So for example, if I do two and hit enter, see it will do two, three, four, five, six instead of one, two, three, four, five, because we said to start from number two. You also have the steps. So if you wanted every second number, so go by two. So if I do two as a step, I hit enter, it goes two, four, six, eight, ten. In my case, I'm not gonna use the step, which defaults to one. And this is two, three, four, five, six. So this way, if I wanted to get anything from second column all the way three, four, five, six to category, that's two to six. If I also want to get this last two, that's seven, eight. So what I could do, I could go back here and change this five to seven and we got two through eight. So what I could do now, I could copy this sequence function, hit escape, go back to this, and instead of using this curly brackets with numbers, I'm just gonna remove all of that, and as a column index number, I'm gonna paste my sequence function. So if I hit enter, it basically gonna give me those columns, and I can drag this down, and get all those columns. I'm gonna delete it out of here. So again, remember, if you're in older version of Excel, you will need to select this range of that many columns and go to the top of the formula bar and do Control Shift Enter to get these results. Now that's sequence function. This way you could do 40 columns, 20 columns. If you had to get a bunch of columns, that would help you get a range of columns. Now, another way to go about this is to use match function and use column names instead of using sequence. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say the columns I want from this other tab, I'm just gonna pick some things here. So let's say I want category. I'm just gonna copy paste those columns from here to there. And that's it. So I'm just gonna remove all of this. So now I have category, price, cost, and inventory. Those are the columns I'm gonna need from this tab. It's important that these column names are exactly the same column names you have here in your data. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do equals match. And for my match function as a lookup value, I'm gonna select these columns, the columns I'm gonna need from the other data set, comma, and then as a lookup array, I'm gonna go to the other tab and select this range of headers on top. Stock number being the first column because when we do a VLOOKUP, stock number is gonna be our matching value. So I'm gonna do this, comma, and then zero as an exact match, the last argument, close parentheses, hit enter. So just to show you again, this is the function we refer to this range of headers in our current spreadsheet. And then we go and basically just refer to the list of 
headers in the other spreadsheet and do an exact match as a type of match. So if I hit enter, I get six, four, five, eight. And what that means, it says category was column number six. So if I go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's category. Now, if I look at price, it should be four and cost should be five. So price four, cost five. And finally, inventory, if I'm not mistaken, is the last one. It should be eight. So that's this. So that returns us basically column numbers from the other worksheet. Now, here you want to make sure you lock these ranges. So I'm going to open this and F4 to lock the first range and also F4 to lock the second range. So both ranges locked in this formula, hit enter, should produce the same results, but we wanna make sure this is locked because we're gonna put this in a formula and we're gonna drag this formula so it should just stay in place. Now, once I got this formula working, now I'm gonna go back and copy this match formula without the equal sign, hit escape, and do a VLOOKUP here. So I'm gonna do VLOOKUP, I'm gonna look up this stock number, comma, it says table array. I'm going to go to other tab and select from B all the way through I. Again, starting from B because stock numbers are the matching column, F4 to lock it, comma. And then when it gets to column number, I'm just going to paste my match function here. And then I'm going to do comma zero for exact match. Hit enter and that should give me this. So just to open the formula back so you can see it, we refer to this B2 cell, this cell, and then we go to the range in our other spreadsheet, and then we use match function as a column index number as a third argument here, and then zero or false as a match type. Let me change this to false so that it's not confusing with this match zero. So I'm going to do false, hit enter. So that gives me this. So basically now we're getting our matching columns by column headers on top. So I'm going to remove this, which means if I go and change this, for example, cost from here to let's say item sold. So if I go back here and replace that column, see it will automatically regenerate this because it will find that item sold is column number seven or whatever it is and update it and get you the right numbers. So now we're getting basically a match based on this column names. If you didn't want to match your column names here to the column names on the other tab, you should be able to also, instead of using this match range here to pass an array. So what I can do, I can just take this and replace it with curly brackets. And in curly brackets, I can list the columns I want from the other spreadsheet. So I'm going to do category again in quotes, because that's going to be text. And then I'm going to do comma. And then again, in quotes, I'm going to do the second column price. I'm going to hit enter just so that we see how this works. So see, it gives me category and price columns from this tab. Now, if I want to add brand and inventory, I go back here and do comma in quotes again, brand comma in quotes inventory, basically the columns comma separated as a match lookup value. I'm going to hit enter. That gives me those columns. And then if I drag this down, that gives me this. And now these column names are not linked. So I can just call them anything I want. And it should basically just work out. There it is. So basically we get our column names here and we can just use those. And here now you can do whatever you want. Just make sure you list what columns you want selected from this other tab and any new column you want to add. All you have to do, just go back and add it to this list. So I just go here and add something like size again. And now I should also get size. And if I drag this formula down, it will update the rest. Now in Google Sheets, we could also, for example, pass this range here as an argument and get our results. But in Excel, arrays are not that flexible. With dynamic arrays, there is some flexibility, 
but it's not completely flexible. So for now, we'll just have to live with the idea that we're gonna have to drag this formula down. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.